Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about latitude, longitude, and maps. And before we get into that latitude and longitude part, let's talk for a minute about maps. Now we've all seen maps, but what is a map exactly? Well, a map is a drawing of a place that shows where different things are located. It shows us what places look like from above, and it helps us know where things are. And there are all types of maps, like maps of cities, states, and countries, maps that show roads and directions, including maps on a smartphone. And you've probably seen a map that shows where everything is at your school. And different maps can show the same place, but with different types of information. Like these three maps are all maps of California, but they show different things. Rain and snowfall, the homes of native Californians, and mountains, hills, and valleys. And there's a special kind of map, a globe. A globe shows a three-dimensional representation of the Earth, and it really helps us get a better idea of where places are on the Earth. And if you spin a globe, you can get an idea of how the Earth rotates. Now, a map isn't only a drawing of a place. It usually also has features to help us understand the map. The map title is usually found at the top of the map and describes the purpose of the map. The compass rose shows which way is north, south, east, and west. The map scale shows how distance on the map represents real-world distance. And the legend, sometimes called the key, explains the meaning of the symbols used in the map. So to identify locations on Earth, we use a coordinate grid system represented by all of these lines. Every location on Earth has an exact global address that uses two coordinates on the grid. So for example, this location with the blue star is at 40 degrees north and 100 degrees west. Those two coordinates are called the latitude and the longitude, and that's the global address of that location. So let's talk about latitude for a minute. Lines of latitude run west to east and are horizontal. The equator is a special latitude line at zero degrees. And the other latitude lines show how far north or south a location is from the equator, with the distance measured in degrees. The area above the equator is known as the northern hemisphere, and the area below the equator is known as the southern hemisphere. Lines of longitude, on the other hand, run north to south and are vertical. Longitude lines show how far west or east a location is from the prime meridian. The prime meridian is the longitude line at zero degrees. Everything west of the prime meridian is in the western hemisphere, and everything east of the prime meridian is in the eastern hemisphere. And when we put lines of latitude and lines of longitude together, that's the coordinate grid system. So let's use a globe to talk about north and south poles. The North Pole is the northernmost location on Earth at 90 degrees north. All of the lines of longitude intersect at this point. The North Pole is located in the middle of the Arctic Ocean in a location that's almost always covered with sea ice. The South Pole is the southernmost location on Earth at 90 degrees south. The South Pole is on land on the continent of Antarctica. Now let's take a look at this map of the United States with the coordinate grid. You can use coordinates to find any location. For example, let's take the coordinates 45 degrees north and 120 degrees west. Where is that location? And what state is that in? Well, if we find 45 degrees north and 120 degrees west, we can follow those lines until they intersect. And there's the location in the state of Oregon. Okay, so let's see if you can find a location using coordinates. Let's take the coordinates 30 degrees north and 100 degrees west. What state is that in? See if you can find out. If you need a minute, pause the video. Okay, so here's 30 degrees north and here's 100 degrees west. If you found that the location is in the state of Texas, you got it right. Good job. And with a map that has a coordinate grid, you can also do the opposite and find the coordinates of locations on the map. So let's take the city of Madeira, for example. What are the coordinates of Madeira? Well, first we need to find Madeira, and there it is. 
Then we need to find the latitude, that comes first, and that's at 37 degrees north. And finally, we need to find the longitude, and that's at 120 degrees west. And that's it. Madeira is at 37 degrees north and 120 degrees west. Okay, your turn. So what are the coordinates of Mono Lake? Take a minute to find them and pause the video if you need to. Okay, so what did you find out? Well, Mono Lake is right here. And if you got the right coordinates, you found that Mono Lake is at 38 degrees north and 119 degrees west. That's it. Good job. Okay, time for a couple of fun facts. Did you know, for example, that at the equator, there are almost exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness every day of the year? The equator also has the fastest sunrises and sunsets in the world. Here's another thing that's interesting about maps. Now take a look at this flat map of the world. Which looks bigger to you, Greenland or the United States? What do you think? Greenland, right? But believe it or not, the United States is much bigger than Greenland. That's because maps with straight longitude lines will make locations near the North or South Poles look a lot bigger. Because think about it. Near the North Pole, all of the longitude lines are coming together. So the distances between longitude lines are smaller. So on maps with straight longitude lines, locations like Greenland get stretched out. And check it out. If we want to see how big Greenland really is, we can do a little animation to show how it compares to the United States. That's a big difference, right? Okay, here's another interesting fact about maps in the Earth. The regions of Earth that are closest to the equator are called the tropics. The northern boundary of the tropics is called the Tropic of Cancer, and the southern boundary is called the Tropic of Capricorn. The tropics have very strong sunlight all year, which means that the weather there is usually warmer than other parts of the Earth. Here's something else. We've talked about degrees, but how do we measure the area between degrees? Well, every degree is divided into 60 units called minutes, and every minute is divided into 60 units called seconds. So you can find a very precise global address for any location, like the Eiffel Tower. And if you want to try a really cool way to view maps, you can use Google Earth, which lets you explore anywhere on the planet, from a view of the whole world all the way down to your home, your school, or any place you'd like to visit. So just go to earth.google.com, do a search, zoom in, zoom out, and check it out. All right, that's it, guys. If you want to get your own slides and practice pages to go with this video, check out the link in the description below. So have fun exploring the world, and thanks for watching. <laughs>